Who determines our future? Us? God? The universe? Or what determines our future? Genetics? Evolution? Our environment? One day about eight years ago, I woke in excruciating pain. I couldn't breathe, I couldn't move. At the time I had two degrees in applied human sciences, I was teaching doctors internationally and treating Olympic athletes. I thought I knew a lot about the human body. So it was after many humbling years of consulting the leading gurus in science and medicine that couldn't help me, I realised there were some big limitations in what we knew about the body. This led me down one of the most interesting rabbit hole journeys you'll ever hear about and led to the concept and the creation of what we now know as PH360 me. That's a talk for another day. So what was I left with after all this? A genetic diagnosis of amyloid polyneuropathy, a mutation in my TTR gene, very rare. Average life expectancy 10 years from onset of symptoms. Mine were eight years ago. So is my life, is my future predetermined? Do I get to have a say? Or is there a way we can change or control our own future? So I want to talk about the concept of controlling our future. To understand this concept, we must first understand who we truly are as humans. We're scientifically proven to be unique. Not one single one of us are the same. Who we are, the state of our body and our mind, is a reflection is influenced by our genes, made up of our DNA, and the things that influence the expression or the activation of our genes, or switch them on and off. We call these things epigenetic factors. Epi meaning outside. So things that influence our genes from the outside. So our genes plus our epigenetics equals who we are when we look and think in the mirror or our phenotype, or you. Let's talk about our genes for a minute. We often don't consider we have genes for our many physical features. We have genes for our eye colour, for our hair colour, for our leg length, for our finger length, and so on. And when these genes become activated, we become who we see in the mirror. So who we are when we look in the mirror, and what we think about, is how many different genes that are activated at any particular point in time which we call our phenotype. Now, our phenotype gives us direct insight into our health status. So who we are and how we look can tell us about our health. How does this work? Well, if we think of our physical traits, how we look, as a direct insight or reflection or projection of our internal health, then we may observe that if we have striations on our fingernails, we may have deficiencies of certain minerals such as zinc. If we have gums that bleed, we may have a heightened oral acidity level or even sympathetic nervous system. If we have our index fingers that are shorter than our ring fingers, we may have increased levels of certain hormones like testosterone. If we have our earlobes that are creased and attached to our heads, we may actually have a different type of tissue collagen quality compared to others. And all of this has been demonstrated through science. So our body on the outside is a direct reflection of how healthy we are on the inside. Our body on the outside is a direct reflection of how healthy we are on the inside at any given point in time. And so the question becomes, does this change? And of course the answer is yes. Our cracked lips may disappear as we increase our levels of vitamin B2 and omega-3s. Our hair may stop falling out as we start to normalise and balance our vitamin B7s and essential fatty acids. Our skin may become smooth as we start to normalise our levels of salicylic acid. And our eyes actually may appear to change colour as we detoxify our digestive system. So if we now know that our health deficiencies can be reflected in our physical traits or how we look, we now know that as our body changes, our health changes. Or as our health changes, our body changes. And more profoundly, as our body is changing on the outside, our health is changing on the inside. And so the question becomes, what causes these change? What creates this change? What's actually hard-coded in our genetics 
that may never actually change, like our short or, th or tall legs, our broad or thin shoulders. And what's plastic and changeable, like the strength of our muscles, the sharpness of our vision, the size of our waist? And what can influence these changes? Or more profoundly, what can influence the activation of our genes that show up as changes in our body? And the answer to this is extremely complex, yet very simple. It's our epigenetics, things outside of our genes. And so if we think big, think of our epigenetics as our environment and our lifestyle. It's the food we eat. To eat gluten or not to eat gluten, that is still the current question. <laughs> it's our social environment and interactions. Are we relaxed? Are we stressed? Are we happy? Are we depressed? It's our indoor spaces. It's our dust, our mould. It's air conditioning. It's a natural light or dark spaces. It's our outdoor places. It's our climate. It's the toxicity. It's the allergens. And our environment, our lifestyle. It's the exercise we do or don't do. It's our career, our jobs, our natural talents, our hobbies, what we do with our time. It's the sleep we get, or the lack of. It's our mind, or lack of. <laughs> That's our spirit. And so these epigenetic factors, things outside of our genes, can actually influence the expression of our genes. They can literally switch certain genes on and off. And so if we now know about our epigenetic factors, and the fact they can influence the way our genes are expressed, which can then change our body shape and our features, which can influence our health on the inside, is it possible we can now control our own health? Can we manipulate or rebalance these epigenetic factors to improve or deteriorate our own health? Can we think small to create big change? Or can we think big to create small change? Or more profoundly, can we control our own future? And to answer this, we need to look at how we can quantify our phenotype or measure ourselves and our features. And to answer this, we need to call in our wealth of knowledge in many different areas of science and medicine. Anthropometry is a scientific study of our body and its specific ratios, linked to literally hundreds of peer-reviewed journal articles and scientific studies showing clear links between our body shape and our risk of disease, and hundreds more linking our body shape and our physiology, or the function of our brain and our body. Embryology, the scientific study of our biological development from preconception through life, clear links between our organ development and function, our brain physiology, our body biochemistry, and the external environment. Endocrinology, looking at the science of how hormones can influence our function, our behaviours, our emotions, and our disease can tell us if we're more likely to be someone who's a happy person or more trusting if we've got high levels of oxytocin, or more likely to be depressed if we've got lower levels of serotonin. Physiology is a scientific study of our body, our systems, our cells and their functions. So identify clear links between our heart, our brain and our gut and can help empower and offer insights to quantify our health biomarkers for our personal health. Molecular biology and biochemistry, looking at the interplay and the interactions between our DNA, our RNA, our protein, and other functions of the cells. Very, very critical for our advancements in knowledge in precision medicine and to help with the resolution of chronic disease in the future. Neuroscience, helping us understand how each part of the brain works, what tasks they're responsible for, how they communicate with each other, and how this can influence our thoughts, our feelings, our behaviours, our emotions. Chronobiology, the science of our biological rhythms, studies the impact of our 24-hour light-dark cycle on our biochemistry, and therefore on our thoughts and our behaviours. Geomedicine, looking at the effect of one's personal environment, looking at the wind, temperature, local allergens, but also population environment looking at disease epidemics like SARS 
or swine flu. Looking at an instance of disease according to geolocation. Looking at toxicity in our waterways. I could go on and on all day. So how does this all integrate? What does this all mean? Well, if we can actually start to take the links and measures and correlations from all these scientific fields, we can start to piece together an accurate representation of our phenotype, how we look, think, act and feel. And so if we think small, we think of our epigenetics with our science and medicine brain, with these little epigenetic marks that can determine how each specific bundle of DNA and protein, or histone, can actually be made accessible and inaccessible for the cell to activate each gene. If we think big, we think of our epigenetics as our environment and our lifestyle. The very things that actually determine those chemical reactions at the microscopic level in each of our cells. So this poses a profound question. Can we actually know about the activation of our genes? without even sampling our genome. And if we can know about the activation of our genes, who we are, or our phenotype, without even sequencing our genome, is it possible that we can decipher a personalised formula for optimal health? And could this be made available for the entire population to help solve the global epidemic of chronic disease that exists that's affecting over 3 billion people worldwide? Is it possible we can have a future generation that's free from pain and disease? Well, ensuring correlation between our genotype and our phenotype is the first important step. The second is making sure that we look at quantifying or measuring our epigenetics. When we talk about measuring our epigenetics, we need to go deeper than just our broad categories of environment and lifestyle. We need to go deeper again and just our categories of food and exercise, activity, environment, social interactions, our mind. We need to look at specific intolerances to food or allergies. We need to look at the, the specific inactivity, or the frequencies of activity. We need to look at how many hours we've travelled. We need to look at the specific times of day we're doing our work, our tasks, the people that we hang out with our personalities. And so if we can quantify our epigenetics and measure these things, we can start to know about our phenotype. We can start to know about us. And so it becomes clear that epigenetics is actually our controllable variable that empowers us to influence our own health, our own experience of life, who we like or dislike when we look and think in the mirror. I believe in the coming years that epigenetics will take centre stage, influencing the future of personalised health. Personalised information, allowing us insight to find out how unique we are and what's right for each one of us individually. Practical applications and integrations with biotechnologies, creating meaningful outcomes to make sure we interpret the overwhelm of data we're currently tracking and collecting. Predictive compliance, actually looking at how we can help someone who needs support, who just needs some guidance and who actually just wants the information so they can do it themselves. Sustainable behaviour change, speaking a language that actually connects with each person's neurotype, and then supporting their behaviours and their emotions. We're not just going to be speaking one generic message anymore. So let's just take a moment to reflect on the true power of this realisation. Every single one of us on this planet has a different set of genes, and a different environment, and a different lifestyle. Not one single one of us are the same not even identical twins. Therefore, we all have different foods we should be eating, different exercise we need to do, different environments and climates that we'll thrive or suffer in, different jobs we'll enjoy or perform efficiently or inefficiently, different friends we should hang out with, and different personalities, different things that will stimulate or quiet our minds. Why is this so powerful? Well, could, have, could our advice that every single person on the planet eats the same healthy fruits and vegetables actually be wrong for some and right for others? That doing 60 minutes of exercise a day strengthen some and cause back and knee pain for others? And could even the way we conduct our, our research in science and medicine based on generic population sciences, averages and best fits 
actually be inaccurate, considering we're all completely different people? And is this acceptable to us as a species moving forward into the future, when we already know better? Within the next five years, we're going to be kicking ourselves for giving such generic healthy advice to the entire population. The same advice, when we already know, clearly know better, it's going to make some sick, injured or diseased and others healthy. I believe it's time to make a new statement as a society about health. Let's change the world's current health experience. Let's upgrade from Windows XP to Windows 8. <laughs> or let's just convert to Mac already. <laughs> I believe it's time to get personal with our health. Let's start using the power of smart health. I know that all our advice, our interventions, our management and outcomes will be specific for each individual. They have to be, they must. We're all completely different people. When you live in pain or with a poor health prognosis, it does funny things to people. It changes the game. It changes the game for you. It changes the game for those around you. It opens your eyes, gives you a much clearer perspective as to why we're even on this planet in the first place. It inspires you. It motivates you. It empowers you to make a difference. So even though there's continuing research to be conducted and theories to be proven in the field of epigenetics, my message for you today is this. What if you can control your health, control your life, control your future? What if the food you have for breakfast tomorrow or the walk you take or don't take could be the difference between health or disease? What would you do if you had the choice to be in your own driver's seat? We all have friends and family that suffer from pain and disease. We have the science, the technology and the means to take not just a step but a leap in the right direction. So what will your choice be? I chose to be in control, to find out what my unique body needs, to live life the way my body intended. And now I'm on a mission. I've devoted my life to this cause and I need your help so that millions of people worldwide can treasure the gift of health and happiness and enjoy this crazy game we call life. I sincerely hope you choose to join me, because together we can make this world a healthier and happier place. Thank you.